So can you give some examples of what God's love does do and does not do? Okay, so with the question, what does God's love do? Obviously, there's the other question, which is what does God's love not do? In other words, what God doesn't do. And I feel there's lots of examples here. You know, you could list, because basically what you're doing here is listing what you know about the quality of God's love and how it is established and delivered to humanity. And then you can ask, you know, apply those particular things to yourself. So let's look at what God doesn't do. Right. God doesn't control, manipulate, browbeat, force, punish, or force people to do anything spiritually, emotionally, physically, or sexually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so God doesn't force anything to happen, or manipulate anything to happen, or control anything into happening. God honours the free will at all times. So God doesn't do all these other manipulative things. So God doesn't manipulate people's will? No. God doesn't force them into a certain way of action. Everything is based around what the person wants in the long run. So so if we were going to love how God loves, then we would not do that either. We would not force, coerce, manipulate, control any person into loving us. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't lie to them in order for them to love us. So we would never do any of those kind of things automatically if we loved how God loved. Great. What are some other examples like... What about rescuing us? Of course, like if we look at the average person on earth, they believe that, you know, rescuing somebody is a great thing. You know, it's lovely to be rescued. That means somebody loves you. Well, God doesn't rescue any of us. If, If you look at what happens with our personal lives generally, when we get into trouble and we ask God to be rescued, we generally don't get rescued. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and that's because God wants us to take full personal responsibility for our own lives and our own choices and decisions. So in a relationship, if we loved how God loved, we wouldn't rescue the other person from their own choices and decisions. We wouldn't do that. So God doesn't do it. God lets us experience the negative consequences of what we've created. Always. So God never takes away those negative things. No. So, so if you look at the situation where, for example, a person overspends financially, right, um, and then they pray to God, please give me some money to fix this problem, God won't give them any money to fix the problem, right? That they will have spent over, overspent financially and they will have to take the consequences of it. God wants them to, in fact, to work out the reasons why they chose to do such a thing that was unloving to themselves and others in the first place. So God's focus is not on having a person um, be rescued every time they make a mistake. He allows us to make mistakes. He doesn't punish us for our mistakes, but each mistake we make has a consequence that we need to feel before we'll learn from it. And so if we in a relationship try to rescue our partner from all the mistakes they make all the time, then a partner is never going to learn anything. They're going to keep making the same mistakes all the time. Yeah. They're going to keep doing the same things all the time. So if we love, if, if, if we look at what God's love doesn't do, doesn't rescue people. So our love shouldn't rescue people. <laughs> what else doesn't God's love do for us in relation to truth, for example? Or... Well, God's love uh, doesn't. Uh, withhold the truth from people, for example. So if we look at uh, our co- common relationships that we see around us, most people withhold truth from their partner at some point. You know, it could be just a simple thing, like your wife comes up, she's in a new dress, or she just put on a new pair of jeans. She comes up and says, does my bum look fat in that? You know, and we know that if we say yes, that she's probably going to get pretty grumpy with this because she doesn't really want to know the truth, right? And so we go, oh, no, you, know, you, look, you look good in that, that's fine. When inside you're just thinking, yeah, you're getting a bit wide there on the backside now, you know, and that, but we're unwilling to say the truth because we're afraid, right? God's love is not afraid of truth ever, mm-hmm. ever. So God's love does not withhold truth. God's love allows the truth always to be spoken. So it's very important to understand. Mm. What else does God not do in terms of, you've spoken about God doesn't withhold truth. What about does God then force us to do things or force us to to know what we should do? No, this is a beautiful thing about God, isn't it? That you, on one hand, God doesn't uh, withhold the truth from us. There's always, like if you look at all of God's laws, there's a law of attraction, law of cause and effect and all that, always trying to show us the truth, always trying to show us the truth. Of course, we can ignore that. 
but God's laws moment by moment are showing us truth. But on the other hand, while those laws show us the truth, they don't force us to do what the truth is. Mm -hmm. So they don't force us into conforming to a certain truth. They don't force us into you know, doing what God believes you should do because God honours the fact you've got free will. You're allowed to make the choice yourself. So while God does expose the truth, God doesn't then get all grumpy and upset and angry and rageful because you don't follow it. So God doesn't uh, give us pep talks or guilt trips or exactly. uh, have arguments with us about the truth. So if every second day I'm sitting down with my partner giving them a pep talk, I don't get a pep talk from God. I don't get that kind of discussion with God. So if I'm sitting down with my partner giving them a pep talk about something or giving them some encouraging speech in order to encourage them and to be more loving, that's not loving at all. In fact, it would be loving if we allowed them to be more loving, right? Mm -hmm. And we just share the truth and then allow them to make their own decisions about those, what they're going to do about it. We don't try to, try to make them go a certain direction by encouraging them a certain direction. We need to give them the space to make up their own mind. Now, hopefully, if they want to love, they will finish up making up their own mind in harmony with love. But they may not. And really, it's none of our business which way that goes, with the exception of we're allowed to make a choice about our resultant action if they choose to do mm -hmm. such things. So, so, for example, if you choose to yell at me every day, and that is a, obviously an unloving action, no matter what is going on, if you choose to yell at me every day, after a while I might go, well, I don't know if I want to live with a person who's yelling at me every day, you know. But I don't or shouldn't try to stop you from yelling at me every day mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, God doesn't stop you from yelling at me every day. And this is a part of how God's trying to help us understand the use of our own will and of develop course. this desire to, to know it. Well, a lot of it is about a, it, developing a desire to love, as I said mm -hmm. in the answer to the first question. What I feel is happening for most people is that most of us don't really have a, a strong desire to love as much as we believe. Right? We have a strong desire to meet our addictions, but we don't often have a strong desire to love as God loves. And so God doesn't encourage within us a desire by going, having a pep talk every day and discussing with us why we should love. Mm -hmm. We have to come to our own conclusions as to why we should love. And in the end, we'll come to understand through that process that when we love, we have a happier life. When we love, we have more sex. When we love, we have more joy. We have more, when we love, in the relationship I'm talking about now, when we love, we have, get along a lot better. When we love, you know, and once we see that, we go, well, of course I want to love. Mm -hmm. Because when we love, all of these more harmonious and more beautiful things happen in my life. And then that desire, as it increases, will cause us to go, okay. I want to love and we'll be wanting to know how to love our partner rather than going, rather than going, my partner's not loving me, I'm out, I'm out of here type of thing the instant it happens, rather than working through the issues of love. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so in t you mentioned addictions mm -hmm. and uh, in terms of things that God <coughs> does not do. Yeah, so God does not feed our addictions mm -hmm. and it's very important for us to understand that. So in a relationship, you see often people feeding each other's addictions. We call it codependence, right? Mm -hmm. Where I'm happy for you to have a certain set of addictions. Like let's say you have an addiction to, to cooking because when you cook and I come home and go, oh, it's a beautiful meal, you get to feel like, oh, that's so nice. I cooked a good meal. I'm a good person. I'm a good woman. I'm a good wife, whatever. Um, and you don't allow me to cook at all <laughs> or take any responsibility for my own life because if I'd cooked one night, you wouldn't get that feeling. Yeah. Right? Or the man might come home thinking, I want to have the meal cooked for me because I've been working all day. And that's an addiction in itself because he's getting away from the point of self-responsibility. He is responsible for his own cooking. And if the wife happens to do it for him, then it's a gift she's giving him. Right? And if he's just addicted to it and he gets angry when she do he doesn't get it, that tells you that he's addicted to it, mm -hmm. um, then he's out of harmony with God's love. He's out of harmony with loving. So it, this issue of addictions is a big issue in relationships where people enter codependent addictions in the relationship and then when one half of the relationship tries to correct that, then they find the other half getting angry and upset and saying, you don't love me anymore, what's wrong, you, know, you don't care about me anymore, when reality is 
the first situation, feeding the addiction wasn't loving. Mm. And we know that because God doesn't feed our addictions. Of course. Yeah. So um, what about the issues, issues of anger and fear? God doesn't respond to our fear or our anger, really. Not really, no. If you, you try getting angry at God and saying, look, you know, if you, God, do this, do that, you know, swearing, carrying on at God because you didn't get something you wanted from God. Did you find at the end of all of that you got something you wanted from God? <laughs> no. You know, didn't hear God doesn't listen to a whole lot of it. <laughs> yeah. So God doesn't pander to our anger. No. Um, or get it punishing with our anger. So Neither. God doesn't punish us back. Because we're angry. Yeah. So God doesn't get angry back because we're yeah. angry with God. Yeah. So, so if we look at what would happen in a relationship, then since God doesn't get angry, then we wouldn't get angry. And if we're getting angry all the time in the relationship, then something's out of harmony with love. If, if we're getting angry in order to manipulate or control the other person, well, God doesn't do that. He doesn't get in a rage and try to punish us for something we did wrong. He just lets us feel the consequences of what we did. Yep. That's all he does. So, and God doesn't say, oh, you're angry. Okay, I'll do that. No, it doesn't pander to the anger. Yeah. It doesn't go, oh, okay, I'm angry and I'm afraid of your anger now, so I better do it. Can you yeah. imagine God sitting up there going, yes, uh, Mary's really upset with me today because she hasn't got, you know, the million dollars she wants in the bank. So I think I'll give her the million dollars today because I really need Mary's approval. Yeah. <laughs> you know, of course that's not going to happen, right? No. And it's never going to happen. Yeah. And uh, the reality is I don't know anybody that's happened to you either <laughs> because... <laughs> That's not the way God actually operates with people. Yeah. And, and yet it is frequently the way people in relationships operate, where yeah. they get angry when the other party doesn't give them what they want. Mm -hmm. that, that's very frequent. And I suppose God is very similar when it comes to our emotions of fear. God doesn't respond. God fear, yeah. doesn't take away our fear. If we see fear, it's interesting the way women and men generally on the planet respond to fear. If if a woman notices her man afraid, she often gets upset with him because she wants him to stand up, you know. But if a man notices a woman afraid, he generally wants to make her fear go away, right? Yeah. Because when she's afraid, there's no love coming out of her at all towards him or, mm -hmm. you know, towards anything that's going on in the relationship. And so he, most men finish up pandering to the fear of their women and most women finish up attacking the fear of their men. Mm -hmm. That's a generalisation, but it is fairly accurate for most people. Either way of dealing with fear is out of harmony with love. Because it's not how God deals with it. It's not how it. God does it. Yeah. God doesn't pander to fear or make fear go away. God wants us to experience fear. God wants us to feel our way through our fear. Mm -hmm. so, so, of course, God's not going to pander to it. And then on the other hand, God doesn't want to punish us for having fear. Like, so every time we're afraid, God doesn't get out the stick and beat us as well, you know, give us something more to be afraid about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, God knows that this fear is a terrible traumatic thing inside of us, but we need to let it out. We need to feel it. So God has a very balanced view of how to handle fear. If we look at relationships today, most people don't have a balanced view of how to handle fear. They either pander to the fear of their partner or they attack the fear of their partner. Yeah. One or the other. Yeah. They don't actually have this loving viewpoint of how to handle fear. Mm. I suppose the other beautiful thing that God doesn't do is that God doesn't respond to our facade or uh, what we would like to present to the world. Exactly. God's yeah. not interested in our facade at all. At all. Mm -hmm. God doesn't care what we look like to the world. God only cares what our character and nature is internally. So God wants a relationship with the real us. Even if the real us is pretty bad at the moment, God would still like to have a relationship with the real us. Mm -hmm. Now, if we apply that to a relationship, we would not try to have all a big facade with our partner just in order to get their approval. So you see this happening in many developing relationships where there's a big facade and so the person gets to know them, enters a relationship with them, and all of a sudden the facade gets dropped. You yeah. often see the, uh, this happening when a person's married. You know, all yeah. of a sudden what happened before they're married and what happened after they're married, very, very different. Why was that? Because before they were married, they were in a facade. Yeah. And after they're married, some other emotions kicked in, such as, oh, I'm safe now, I'm secure now. He's tied, Honeymoon's to, over. He's tied to yeah. me through, a, a, legal through document. a legal document. Now, not that it's really true, he's tied to me now, he could lose things now if he doesn't do the right thing. 
And so that means I can be safe and so I can put on a bit of weight and not care for myself and I can eat different food now and I can do all sorts of things now because I can get away with all of that. Now, that's not the way God loves. God, God wants us to be real all the time. Mm-hmm. So, so if a person finds that before they were married they were acting one way and then after they married they are acting a different way, they were in a facade, either at one or both ends of that spectrum. And they need to address why they'd be in this facade if they loved the way God loves. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I suppose perhaps one of the most um, challenging things about God's love is that it doesn't flow unless we want truth at the same time. Exactly. This is a very interesting point about God's love, I feel, in that unless a person desires to be in harmony with truth, God's love in that moment cannot flow into the individual. So God wants to love the individual, but the love can't flow. There's no, there's no flow into the individual because the individual is preventing the love from flowing because love is based upon truth. Mm-hmm. So if we look at a relationship, we often see people who think they're in love, but they've lied to their partner in the course of a day, often lied many times to their partner. That is not love. You can't be close like that. Mm-hmm. You can only be close in a relationship by telling the truth. God knows that. The way people on earth act is that they can lie about this, lie about... They can even lie about having sex with somebody else and still think they're in a good relationship. Yeah. Not true. Yeah. You can't. It's all just a facade. The whole lot's fake. And the reality is love cannot flow between two people who are not in truth with each other. And I can, I can relate to that from my personal perspective <coughs> mm-hmm. in that um, I feel that you love me very much and I have a lot of evidence for that in the way you behave, in the things you say, in the way you act. Yeah. And but the passion and desire I have for you That as you a express, and, and yes. The amount of things I want to know about you and understand about you and so forth. All of those things. Mm. And um, because I don't often even just want to face the truth about myself, not even the truth about... It, sometimes I feel I have better feelings about you than I do about myself. I agree, yeah. Um, because I don't want to face that truth, I can't really be connected to myself and therefore I can't even feel love coming from you. I can't receive the love. So uh, it's one of those things that works both ways. It does. If I don't want to face the truth about my real feelings about you, then no love can really flow between us. But equally, if if one partner is... If you don't want to face the real feelings about the truth about yourself... Even if I have a high regard for you and have a feeling that I would like to have a love connection with you, yeah. we can't actually connect. Not really, because you're constantly going to be thinking that I will have the same feelings that you have about you. Yes. Which, which is not true, of course, but, uh, but unfortunately we often believe that's true. And so unless we face the truth on a number of levels, the truth about how we feel about the other person but also the truth about how we feel about ourselves, Mm -hmm. then it's going to be very, very hard for love to flow between the two of us. And that's, I suppose, this discussion is about what God does not do Mm. and God's love can't really flow to us while we're not in a state of truth. About ourselves or the other person. Yeah, yeah. and, and it's a, an amazing way God's just created the soul, isn't it? That it is. even when love is present, it can't flow into us unless we desire truth personally. Exactly. And in fact, I believe personally, and have done for many thousands of years, <laughs> as you know, that actually love without truth is not actually possible. It's not it's not, it's not actually it's love, not actually is it? Love. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. just addictions and dependencies yeah. and it's not actually love anyway. So unless we see many couples holding on to the truth about how they truly feel about themselves and the other person in the relationship. And while you're holding on to the truth and not discussing it with the other party in the relationship, it's impossible to have a close relationship. And so we see them trying to have a close relationship but doing things that make it physically impossible to have a close relationship. Mm-hmm. God doesn't do that. God's always encourage, encouraging truth between ourselves and God. So, so once we engage that same process with God, we'll always have a close relationship mm-hmm. with God. And God knows that. You know, from God's end, there's no problems with truth. <laughs> yep. you know, God's not afraid of it, angry about it, upset about it or any of those things. We are the people often that get angry about it, upset about it, scared of it, frightened. You know, we, we often have a lot of grief about truth as well that we need to experience. 
And we need to be open to experiencing those emotions if we're truly going to have a close relationship with our partner. Yeah, okay, so I guess we've just run through some examples, really, of what God's yes. love does not do. And like I said, we could come up with hundreds of other examples. Um, and it's, I feel the reason why we wanted to discuss this right up front is that we want to see that God's love does not do certain things. Yeah. A lot of people have this viewpoint that God's love allows everything. That is not true. God's love does not allow everything. God's love has a very fixed, determined things that it does allow and things that it does not allow, right? Yeah. And love itself is the same. Yes, yeah. yeah. So perhaps just by way of summary, I can just run through those things sure. that you've explained there sure. just, um, just briefly. So God's love does not control us, manipulate us, threaten us or force us to do anything against our own will. Yes. God's love does not rescue us from our own negative creations, mm -mm. but rather has compassion. Yeah, and, and understanding and all of those things. And actually helps us come to an understanding of what we've done and yes. how to fix what we've done even. Exactly. And also it doesn't punish us for what we've done, but yeah. wants us always to move forward in a positive direction to repair what we've done. Yeah. yeah. And I suppose that's the issue of when we're rescued, it prevents that whole process of understanding and then being yep. able to fix it. Exactly. It? And yeah. it also it prevents the individual from having some degree of personal responsibility in the end. So, so it prevents the pe person from understanding how to fix the problem in the future if it ever occurs again. Yeah. And, and this is a beautiful thing about God's love is God's love teaches us to such an extent that in the end, we know how to fix it over and over again. We know yeah. if we hit that same situation again, we fix it the same way and it always gets fixed. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing yeah. that actually gets prevented in a lot of relationships exactly. because we do the opposite. Exactly, because yeah. we rescue instead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, God's love does not withhold from us the truth about ourselves, yep. but rather exposes the truth at every moment through the laws of attraction, cause and effect, and sh through these laws, showing us our own conditions, our own condition and attractions All the about time. what is happening. Yeah. yeah. So God's love isn't withholding information mm. about ourselves from us. Yeah. God, in fact, created a huge amount of laws to give us information <laughs> about the truth about ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. God's love does not give us pep talks, no. lectures, no. arguments, or how we should. Have. Act, behave or feel. Yes. And God's love doesn't prepare us for the future way we should act. Yeah. Right. God's love is always encouraging us to feel how we feel right now and act upon how we feel right now in harmony with love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God's love does not show us where we've gone wrong when we're not open to seeing that truth. Exactly. Or when we're avoiding the truth or finding out other truth. Yes. So God's love, in other words, doesn't expose the truth to us unless we want the truth as well. So we've got to want it. It doesn't, it's sort of like, there's all these laws that expose the truth to us, but, but the, I suppose this, the flavour is this, is that yeah. it, it doesn't sort of, um, those truths cannot enter us unless we're willing to absorb them. So yeah, the and this is, this is interesting because you've been discussing all these points in relationship uh, in regards to yeah, having relationship. a relationship. Yeah. Um, and so one of the previous points was that God's love never withholds truth from exactly. us. So if I'm considering that in my relationship, yeah. then I would never withhold truth from, truth from my partner. Exactly. But in this point, we're saying um, God's love doesn't actually show us where we've gone wrong unless we want truth. So how would I... How would I marry those two Well, the best way to probably think of it is that God's love doesn't, the truth of what God's love is attempting to show us doesn't actually enter us unless there is an openness within ourselves to desire the truth to enter us. Mm -hmm. We see this happening in relationships all the time, if you think about it. Yeah. If, if you tell you the truth to a partner and they don't want to know it, it doesn't enter them at all. Mm -mm. So if you, were, if you say to them, you, every time you burp in front of my friends, I feel embarrassed, <laughs> and they go... <laughs> you know, again, you know, just to make the point, they're not hearing what you're saying and how much it distresses you and what's going on for, yeah. for you, you know, for you in that situation. I'm not saying that he should stop burping. I'm just saying that he's not listening to you about how yeah. you feel. Yeah. 
uh, whereas God's love always listens to a person about how it feels when, when it's properly expressed. And the person, if we were in the state of love, we would listen to how the other person feels. Yeah. yeah. And also, I suppose God's love, it sort of goes back to that lecture, like lecture principle. God's love, or if I was to act in harmony with God's love, I might say, look, when you burp in front of my friends, I get embarrassed. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't then go beyond that and say, and the reason you've got that issue is because you have no uh, self-respect and therefore, or, or whatever, I wouldn't then want to hammer home a big lesson to you unless you said, oh, want to know why. I want to know why. Yeah. And God's love waits for the person to want to know why. Mm. We, it's always trying to expose why, of course. Yeah. And, you know, so it's with always, truth. With truth. Yeah. But, but the person has to want to know why before it's going to enter them. Yeah. And this is the same in a relationship. But God knows that. So God is always waiting for us to want to know things. Yeah. Then more can be exposed to us. Yeah. It's the same in a relationship. If we're in a partnership where the other partner doesn't want to know anything about what they do, then it's impossible really to, to share any truth with them. And, and also, it's impossible to be close. It's impossible to be close. But and also I think about that in terms of on my end, mm -hmm. Am I desiring this truth from my partner? Because if I'm hearing them, paying lip service to it and acting in the same way, I haven't really received a truth Not about this. Not at all. Yeah. If I keep doing the same thing and I can see that the partner has a point in terms of it's not harmonious with love of friends or family or, or, or my partner and I keep doing the same thing over and over again, then I don't really care. And I'm demonstrating to my partner that I don't really care for them, actually. Yeah. That's what I'm demonstrating. And I suppose another, I'm sort of talking about this point because I feel that people can get a bit stuck here around mm -hmm. issues of truth mm -hmm. and make excuses for not telling the truth or mm -hmm. make excuses for hammering their partner with the truth. Yes, and both things and are wrong. Both things are wrong. And mm -hmm. I feel it's very clear, but mm -hmm. I, I'm yeah. sort of developing this discussion because I know that people get stuck around sure. this issue. Sure, Because I suppose the other way um, or the other aspect of this truth of, that God does not show us where we've gone wrong when we're not open to seeing the truth mm -hmm. or when we're avoiding the truth is that if I say to you, look, I've got an issue with you being unloving towards uh, my family mm -hmm. and you say, yes, yes, okay, and then things don't change. It, God's love, or uh, it's not loving for me then to keep hammering you with this same truth and say, "Look, you're not being loving. You're not being loving. You're not being loving." Not at all. Yeah. I'm God's not. God's not doing that to you. No. So why, why would I? I do it to you? But then I'm God's love doesn't some... tolerate the behaviour either. Exactly. So God's love, you know, God, God just sort of, you could say, leaves the relationship. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's not the way it really works. By doing such an action, we've automatically left the relationship yes. and all God does is reflect that to us. And that's, I mean, I feel that's the same thing for a relationship between you and I. Yeah. If, if you are continually doing something that's unloving towards our soul. Or to, towards other people. Or towards other people. Raising with me. You've left the relationship in terms of love. Exactly, I have. So I can only honour your will. Exactly, by leaving by the relationship leaving as the well. relationship as well, because you're showing me you don't want this same relationship based on love. Exactly. As God loves. Exactly. So, yeah, thank you. I just wanted to make that clear for yeah, people. Yeah. yeah. But again, like, we've got to be careful here of not making a heap of rules for people, right? Because this is all about just asking the question, how does God love me? How does God love me at the moment? How, like, do I get my addictions met? No. So why am I trying to meet the addictions of my partner? I've got to have some personal investment in why. Do I, does God try to control me? No. Why am I trying to control my partner? Mm. Yeah. Does God try to you know, falsify a heap of things to me? No. God tells me the raw truth exactly as it is through the laws of attraction and cause and effect. Why am I trying to falsify things with my partner? Mm -hmm. And this will help me address a lot of issues internally. Remember, it's a personal question. It's not a question of how do you do things God's way. It's a question of what does God do with me? How can I do the same thing with my partner? Mm -hmm. Now, if both my partner and myself were focused on this self-analysis, then you could see immediately you'd have a much better relationship. Absolutely. So, so you know, the guy who's going, the woman is running around tidying up after a fella, you know, 
she'd be sitting down going, I know this isn't loving. Now, the fella, he thinks that's great because he's getting all of his clothes tidied up. But if he asked her, what do you feel about it? Do you feel that's loving? She'd go, no, it's definitely not loving. Right? And so if he was tr truthful about it, he'd ask himself, well, okay, maybe her viewpoint's distorted. So let, let me think about how God does things because God tidy up God's own messes. Well, God doesn't even create a mess in the first place. It's only people who create messes, right? Yeah. So God doesn't even create a mess in the first place to be tidied up. So if I was loving to you, I would not even create a mess in the first place that you have to tidy up. And mm -hmm. I certainly would not, after creating such a mess, expect you to tidy it up. Right? It would be such an unloving thing for me to do. But by asking myself the question, how does God do? What does God do in this situation? I now have a much clearer perspective of what I need to do in the relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. But if I don't believe in God, why not just ask your partner, do you think it's loving that I do this for you? <laughs> you'll get a pretty frank answer generally under those circumstances yeah. Yeah. and you'll have a very good idea what's out of harmony with love. So, so the woman who tries to control a partner says, look, I know I try to control you a lot and I do control you a lot. How do you feel about that? And he'll go, to be frank with you, most of the time I feel like leaving you because you do it. You know, like, and I just finish up putting up with it. I don't feel it's loving at all. And, and she'd have to go, well, maybe his viewpoint's distorted and mine's right, but I don't think so. Yeah. You know, if you were truly if you open were sincere, and sincere, you sincere wouldn't do that. About, yeah. Yeah. And I suppose <clears throat> um, it's good that you raised that about not making rules because I often feel uncomfortable talking about relationships of uh, mm. issues of relationship because I see very much that people take it on in terms of pointing the finger always and take it on in terms not of in terms of pointing the finger at ourselves yes. and being being sincere about looking at things and they go oh well I saw they said this thing and you're not doing this thing and so, so therefore you, 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 you. and and that's really missing the very first point totally missing the point yeah what for me does God love to yeah what what for me would love to the yeah. other questions are personal questions they're not about what would love do, what yes. would you do. <laughs> it's about yeah. what, what would, would I, I do, do? if yeah. I was loving here. So you could be yelling and screaming at me, what does God love do? Mm -hmm. God's love wouldn't retaliate and yell and scream back. Mm. God's love would sit there, feel about what's going on, and if you, you'd either leave, right, or you'd sit there and wait till the tirades finish and maybe have a smile about it and can have compassion and understanding for it. Either way is fine. Mm -hmm. That's what God's love would do. It wouldn't yell and scream back. Exactly. Uh, and wouldn't threaten you. It wouldn't say, I'm leaving you now that you've just yelled and screamed. It wouldn't threaten you. Yeah, we might leave the situation briefly, but God's love would have compassion. And if I don't have compassion for you yeah. or vice versa, and God's love then I already... understands why the person might be angry. Probably God's, God understands it far better than we do, of course. Yeah. Oftentimes in a relationship, we're not as understanding as we believe ourselves to be, but God does understand. So, so what can I understand about why you're angry? Mm. See, why you're angry might be because I've done something that you need to be angry about or that yeah. you feel angry about. Yeah. You know? It also could be because you want an addiction met that I'm not meeting. Either one way means I've got something to work with and the other way you've got something to work with. But if I'm open to responding the way God responds, then I'd at least have, I'd be in the position to be able to love more as a result. Yeah. But you can see that you, to ask this question, you've really got to want to, you've got to want to like be loving yourself. That's right. And sometimes I do, where we talk to people about relationships, <clears throat> sometimes I do feel like throwing my hands up in the air and saying, there's not much more I can say because you haven't, fulfilled the first question is do I actually want to love in this situation exactly and unless that's an an answer in the positive yep. anything else we talk about you can is, just be manipulated to exactly. suit your own addictive yep. ends really so maybe if I can extend that a lot of people come up to us and ask us a question about their personal emotions in their relationship oftentimes they're asking a question when the feeling I'm getting from them is they don't want to love mm. They're asking the question for alternative reasons. They don't want to have to love. Now, my feelings are this. If you don't want to love, you're going to look for excuses to not love. That's the reality. Mm -hmm. You're going to look for reasons to not love. If you want to love, you will look for reasons to love. Right? The two different places, totally different places, they're opposite ends almost of the spectrum. 
So when a person comes up and asks the question about their relationship, the first question they really need to be asked in return is, do you want to love? Because that's not the feeling I'm getting here. What I'm feeling is you want them to love you. Mm. See, the, the, that's the problem that I see in most relationships. They want the other person to love them, but they don't want to have to love themselves. Right? Mm. They don't want to have to love the other person. They don't want to have to love, period. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and this is a big problem that most people face. We've, we've got to be sincere about love. So when people come up and ask us emotional questions about their emotional state, oftentimes I say to you afterwards, babe, that wasn't the point. Mm. That person doesn't want to love. What's the point of having a discussion about all of these emotional reasons why they do this and why they do that? And it's to do with their mother this and their father that and their childhood this and their childhood that and all these different things going on when at the end of the day, they just don't want to love anyway. They're angry and bitter about love. They just don't want to love. Mm -hmm. Like, the only thing we can discuss with them in that place really is, you don't want to love, work out the reasons why. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? You yeah. don't want to do what God does. God loves. Mm -hmm. You don't want to love, work out the reasons why. You can't have a decent relationship with anybody while you're not wanting to love. Yeah. That's reality. Yeah. You can't have a decent relationship with children, with your parents, with, the, with society generally, or in fact, and mostly with your partner, if you don't want to love. Mm. You need to get beyond the rage and anger and rebellion that you feel about love, work your way through all of those things. Then you, will say, you could say, I want to love. When you get into that space, then it's worth talking about what emotions are stopping you because you'll want to deal with them then yeah. rather than ignore them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, well, we were halfway through the summary of what no, God's yeah, love does yeah, not do yeah. um, before that little sidetrack. Yeah. So just to finish off, God's love does not feed our addictions. God's love no. does not respond negatively to anger, no. nor does it pander to anger. No. God's love never responds to fear or attempts to make the fear in a person go away. Correct. God's love only responds to emotional based reality. Yes. In other words, anything intellectual that is just not part of a person's emotion, God doesn't respond to it at all. Anything that is emotional, that, that is a part of their real feelings, their real passion, their real desire, God responds to. Mm. So God's dealing with the real the real self. The real self. Not not the fake facade self that's all just intellectually based, full of denial about emotion. God's yeah. feeling the emotion and addressing the emotion constantly. Yeah. And God's love never flows unless truth is desired in the moment. Yes. Yeah. So if we look at all of those things, that's what God's love does or does not do. And, uh, and so I feel once a person understands those particular questions about what does God's love do, they can ask themselves that question on many subjects and mm -hmm. find out lots of things about what God's love does. Mm -hmm. God's love does have laws, for example. So that doesn't mean that anything goes. So anybody who believes that love in a relationship means that anything goes mm -hmm. is out of harmony with God's love. Yeah. Right? So these are all things that a person can easily determine for themselves if they truly have a desire to love. Lovely. Thank you.